Hello, and welcome to the Blossom Your Awesome podcast, episode number 36. Today on the show, we have got not one, but two guests. First, channeler Serge Grandbois is here, and he is going to be channeling non physical teacher Chris. Chris and Serge have been collaborating for nearly 40 years, and the work they do is similar to the likes of Edgar Case, Jane Roberts and Seth, Esther Hicks, and Abraham. I am so honored and delighted to have them both here, and I cannot wait to hear the powerful guidance and insight that Chris has for us all. Thank you so much for being here. Welcome to the show. My pleasure, and it's very nice to meet you, Sue. Oh, it's nice to meet you too. And you know what? I have to welcome Chris as well. That would be rude of me not to, right? So welcome to Serge and Chris. And now, um, Serge, I'm going to say we just kind of get started with a little bit of your background, how you got into this line of work, and then we'll get into, you know, the other stuff. Hmm. Um, okay, uh, that's actually very nice. And um, I'll just say that by the time I was around nine or 10, and I remember very specifically waiting at the corner for the light to turn green so I could go to school, because school is just a few blocks from home. And all of a sudden, this strange thought came into my head. And I'm looking at the, especially the adults around me, and I'm thinking, geez. I wonder what makes these people think the things they think and do the things they do. And then I go, oh, I'm too young for that. (laughs) Back off, whatever that was. Um, But that was a seed planted in me um, to actually look into that. And over the years, I believe my life has led me, especially with the channeling, to explore those deeper inner dimensions of ourselves and actually find answers to why we do the things we do and why we think the things we think. And it has literally been a continuing theme since I was a little kid and I'm going to be 67 at the end of May. So it's a long time. And I started the channeling, um, I think 40 years ago now. So it's a very long time. And I think as a result of that, I have come to understand myself in interesting ways um, that have helped me let go of so many issues from the past and traumas and whatever, because I kind of grew up in a fairly toxic environment. And, um, you know, I could have had, I could have been carrying so much baggage, but I think with Chris's help and helping me understand I was able to leave a lot of that by the curbside and just keep growing as a person. And I'm not saying I'm grown. I'm just saying I'm, I keep growing. Um, and I, I like that because it gives room for more as opposed to, okay, well, I'm done, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so I just like to have options open. I like to explore life and I like to understand um, the background of things, the background of our lives. Uh, I'm uh, many years ago, I uh, decided to do a few things that I know Chris has been doing uh, for a long time, but uh, I became a uh, NLP practitioner. Um, I got certified in that I got certified as a hypnotherapist. And I also got certified as, as a life coach, because I also wanted to kind of understand from my point of view, how Chris was working with people because he does these things expertly and um, with very nice success. I just wanted to understand it. And when I uh, uh, applied for the NLP practitioner, which is Neuro Linguistic Programming, um, a lady by the name of Janice Gray was the uh, director of the um, NLP Centers Canada in Ottawa. And I made an appointment and went to talk with her. And at one point she says, it's, Obvious to me, you don't remember me, but I have been in your living room when you do your channeling. And she says, I know from my experience in that field that 
when Chris speaks and works with people, he uses NLP. I had no idea what she was talking about until I took the certification myself. Mm -hmm. uh, so he was doing things, you know, way ahead of me and kind of waiting uh, for me to catch up a little bit to him. And then he would just keep on going. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. So I just have so many questions now. So my first question for you, Serge, is... So when you heard, first kind of got that, you know, you're standing there, you're young, this is many years ago, and you get that kind of, why do people do things? So was that like an audible? Did you hear something? Was it just a message that landed in your head? And what is your, so now today, looking back on that, was that your first kind of message from Chris? Uh, that I was aware of at that point, whether it's Chris or whatever you want to call it. And it was sort of um, almost like an inner dialogue that was going on in my head. And I became aware of it and thought it was the most curious thing in the world because we all have thoughts, we all have ideas that stream in and out of us. But this one in particular uh, really caught my attention because it was literally from left field. Mm -hmm. Where does this come from? And it's so intriguing. Who would think of wondering what it is that why people think and why people do? You know, um, and I also took courses in psychology at the university, um, which left me sort of humdrum on it, uh, especially when they started exploring statistics. And I said, wait a minute, people are not statistics. We're not statistics. Neither am I. Um, but it's at least, um, opened up many doors for me. And I, even though sometimes myself or other people, we go through some very challenging experiences. Um, I think we're far more resilient than we are. And those two little questions that popped into my head, why do people think the things they think and do the things they do? Um, like I suggested earlier there, there were seeds. Um, planted there um, to encourage me to keep questioning the universe, get answers from the universe. And when I started the channeling, it's like, okay, well, the universe is now answering big time. <laughs> and mind you, the answers just bring up more questions. And that's fine by me because then it's fun. Mm -hmm. And now at what point was it just evident? At what point did you have the complete realization or did Chris, uh, you know, at what point was it just, okay, Chris is here with me and is working through me. At what point did that happen? Hmm. That's also uh, kind of interesting as well. Um, I had started exploring the idea of channeling in the format of Edgar Casey, known as the sleeping prophet. Mm -hmm. And I had been doing that. That's how I started a little bit. And one night I had a most interesting, fabulous dream. I was in this incredible mansion. And just walking about these big halls, these massive rooms and everything. And I go by a room and there's a lady that looked like the stereotypical grandma slash librarian, you know, with the grandma arms, the donut hair, sitting at a piano. And she kind of motions to me to come and sit on the bench besides her. And I remember on the piano, there was a white kind of alabaster elephant bust and she pulls out these like I'm talking these massive cards and they were called destiny cards and she's laying out the deck of cards similar to tarot I don't remember anything that was discussed but I do remember at one point having the feeling that I needed to step out of the room and just breathe a little bit because this was kind of like oh heavy <laughs> heavy stuff <laughs> and and then a few minutes, I go back in the room and she's not there. Uh, where is she? So I start walking around the hallways and in the rooms and I can't find her. And at one point I come across 
a stereotypical butler with the white gloves and a silver tray. And I asked him where this lady is, saying, I was just talking to her. And he turned as white as a ghost. And he says, but she's been dead for years. How could you have been? You've been talking to a ghost. <laughs> and that was one big clue as well. Um, wow. And later on, Chris explained that he took that guise in order for me uh, to be more approachable to me. Uh, because the, the the image sort of reminded me a little bit of my own grandmother. And so I thought, and the name was Christine. Yeah. And um, so I left it alone. And then not too long after that, I one morning I wake up, I'm in the shower, and I realize that I'm actually engaging in an inner dialogue with this personality. Okay, that's interesting. Um, and this went on for a little while. And then one morning I said, okay, okay. If we're going to do this, we're going to do it now. Sat down on my chair and I start relaxing because I'd never done more or less the kind of spontaneous trance like that. Mm -hmm. And just as I'm about to kind of go into full trance state, the fire alarm in my building goes off and the, the alarm for my apartment is like 10 feet away. <laughs> oh, incredible noise. And yet Chris came through and drowned it out. And a few days later, I said, okay, well, let's try this again. And sure enough, exactly the same circumstance. I go into trance, the fire alarm goes off. So very noisy. And yet the trance stayed. It was locked in. I didn't wake up out of it or anything like that. So at that point, I said, okay, I guess this is our handshake. We've got a deal now. <laughs> and um, at one point, one man who used to come to my groups uh, back then, um, he was a very nice, very interesting man. He was head psychiatrist at a hospital. And he would sometimes ask Chris questions about because he his um, area of expertise was people with schizophrenia, um, uh, split and multiple personality disorders. And sometimes he would have blocks with some of his patients. So he would come and get insights from Chris on how to approach the person he was dealing with. And I asked him point blank at one time, I said, am I like one of your patients? Is that what's going on? He looked at me almost shocked and he said, no, I said, this is a completely different thing. People that have these particular conditions and struggles, they can't do this. There's no way. And the answers I get are beneficial. That doesn't happen the other way. So he reassured me I had uh, no pathology of any kind. <laughs> so that was kind of reassuring as well. Wow, this is all so fascinating. So for people who don't kind of, um, it, I'll just use myself as an example. So, you know, like you were saying earlier, Serge, we, not all of us, but some of us who are kind of drawn to the metaphysical or find ourselves more spiritual, you know, we want to learn how to kind of tap into this other side or do we all have a Chris? Do we can, is this something we can all access? To varying degrees. Um, the way I've come to understand it, um, I, and there's been many, um, Andrew Davis Jackson, for example, who was a precursor to Edgar Cayce. Um, he was the, called the seer of Poughkeepsie. Extremely interesting. A prolific writer as well. Um, and um, Jane Roberts and Seth, for example, as well. There's uh, Abraham Hicks. Uh, there's many, many others. There's Daryl Lenka and Bashar. You know, there's quite a few around. Um, I think we do all have the potential. But it's like somebody who has the potential to get an education. Some people might only go through eighth grade high school and then they're sort of done. They, they just go out into the world. And other people may continue to college or even university or even take more advanced courses and get PhDs and whatever else. Um, not everyone is suited for 
all of that. Hmm? So we all have uh, a certain potential intuitiveness in us. Um, some of it can be fun for a while and people move on and stuff like that. And other people just make a realization that this is what they want to continue. And I do think that in direct response, we all have, everyone has the potential, just not everyone necessarily wants to go the full distance because it is like kind of a, like a marriage, if you like. Hmm. Now for you, I mean, I, so, and, and that was a beautiful response and, uh, you know, but I feel like for certain people, like you actually do this for a living and you've been doing it for decades. You're, uh, you know, have this, you're channeling this. And do you feel like there's an aspect of you that is like you're chosen, like you're special? <laughs> actually, I've never gone there. I, that's, it's actually not even part of my own makeup my psychological makeup, um, because I do believe that everyone is extraordinary and everyone is special. We just show it in different ways. And um, for instance, um, somebody who is honest doesn't necessarily shout it from the rooftops because then they become suspicious. Uh, somebody who is very intelligent really makes no boast about it. You know, they just do their stuff. And in a similar way, I don't see myself as having a special access to, you know, some of the secrets of the universe. I don't, I don't see it that way because I have to work my own issues out. I don't have a special lock and key that grants me all, all the answers. I have to work for my own stuff. Um, and like everybody else, sometimes my challenges are challenging and other times they're more easygoing. And uh, I also discovered something interesting in terms of my relationship with Chris. He has never, ever come to me and said, well, see, I told you so. If you had just listened to me, none of that. Because he also doesn't view what we consider mistakes as mistakes. So instead, he lets me work my shit out on my own. And then he may come in and offer pointers as to how to not repeat that or how to actually change direction for even better results. And I, he's not a helicopter dad, <laughs> you know? Right. <laughs> and I truly, truly appreciate it because I have my own freedom to fall flat on my face if I want to. And then when I get up, he can offer me pointers on how not to fall flat on my face again. <laughs> Mm, no. Oh, I love that. Now, um, so can is it okay at this point to speak directly to Chris? Does uh, can we, you know, as far as like any kind of uh, insight or guidance for our listeners, people who are kind of struggling and stuck in life, hmm. right? Is there just yep. some insight? Yep. Um, they just take, and now I've also been doing this for a very long time, so it doesn't take long for the switch to occur. <clears throat> now we trust that you are comfortable. And we thank you for your consideration and for the opportunity to share with you and your audience. And your question actually is very pertinent, especially at these particular times that appear to be more challenging than a few years ago. And the challenge may go on for a little while because there is massive change occurring. And those changes do not necessarily have to do with changing external conditions and circumstances, but changing, as Joseph put it, what you think, why you think, and why you do the things you do. 
So that particular baseline, that paradigm, is in the process of transformation. That means that you, as human beings, as individuals, also have an opportunity to recognize so much it might feel overwhelming, but definitely know that as a species, you are not bound to the consequences of your DNA. You are not bound to the consequences of your ancestry. You are not bound to the consequences of your past. You are not bound to the consequences of what people may consider past life decisions and actions. Know that you form your present reality as the basis for both your future and your past. You exist in a very unique frame outside the existence of time. But you utilize time sometimes to keep yourselves bound because you think you have no choice. So you replay the events of the past, not necessarily in the healthiest manner. For instance, the notion that you expect the other shoe to drop at any moment is very popular amongst your species. You worry that if you do not worry enough, you might not find a solution to your problems. Now, the thing is that worrying in this way actually has never solved any issues. You solve the issues when you stop worrying. And you are also recognizing as a species that you have an incredible ability to form your experience, again, due to the kinds of thoughts or beliefs that you entertain through the auspices of your feelings, your emotions, and your imaginings. So this creates a particular very powerful triad that you use just like the potter uses his wheel and his hands to give incredible shapes to a lump of clay. It may turn into a beautiful vase or a tray, or something else. He forms them because he has a feeling of what is in that lump of clay. He uses his emotions to power his hands, and he uses his imaginings to give it the shape that he feels exists in that clay. And your reality is like a lump of clay. You give it form, shape, this dimension. You give it so many beautiful things. Again, due to what it is that you think and do with yourselves. Does that make some sense to you? Mm, it, it, I feel like Chris was talking directly to me. <laughs> and um, yeah, it makes so much sense. It, it really does. Uh, that was beautifully powerful. Now, my next question is for, uh, you know, as far as it's just human nature, right? So how do we discover our, is there some advice for discovering our true potential if we are lacking self-worth or hmm. kind of not and then, Again, another set of very pertinent inquiries. And indeed, many people will seek through the mountains and the valleys of life for the one person who might solve their problems. They reach the mountaintops only to find that the guru has gone out to lunch or is out to lunch in many ways. As long as you convince yourself that your source of power may exist outside of your being, and is therefore responsible for your well-being and decisions, you will always feel as if somehow or other you are standing in quicksand. The best way is to cut the ties to that kind of mindset that somehow or other you might not be worthy or worthwhile. 
You are all extraordinary creatures. Extraordinary. And many times when we say this, people go, what do you mean? Extraordinary. I'm just Joe Schmo. I just live, pay my bills, and I will die. Yes, because that is what you believe you are. And you will always be what you believe yourself to be. There is no other rule. So if you change the mindset and begin to think of yourselves as extraordinary beings, and you learn to appreciate the beauty in the little flower, in the little bird, in the wind, in the leaves, in the little fish or the big fish, or in yourself, then you begin a process, an timeless process, that people have engaged for eons in realizing that they are more than the sum of all of their parts. You are not bound by space nor time. Again, you are not bound by your past, your DNA, your reincarnational actions, whatever they are. Each being is individual and powerful. If you even tasted one tiny little drop of that nectarine power, you might wonder how you have ever given away your power to others to determine who and what you can be. Many people do what their parents and their family environment suggest, sometimes resenting it but not daring to show it. And they suffer. Every time you give away a little piece of your power, it is like giving away a piece of your arm. You end up suffering to a great degree. Once you stop doing that, and sometimes even listening to that still inner voice, the little voice that may ask you, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? Why are you thinking this way? And if you can get into the habit, and it is a lovely, simple process of asking yourself why you think and do the things you think and do, you will get answers. Whether you realize it or not, you are always engaged in inner dialogue. Always. Most people do not pay attention to it. But therein lies the secret, is that you are multidimensional beings. There are many dimensions to you. And they all try to assist. But when the central personality, you, is like, no, I cannot listen to this. No, 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 no. How can the message get through? And it may knock many times at the front door, at the back door, in the windows, until you decide you will listen or not. And many people shut the door on the process, say, I have none of this, I don't believe any of that. I believe my problems are because of my government, or because of my neighbors, or because of my ex-spouse, or because of my children. You will always find yourself on that treadmill. Does that make some sense to you? It does. It really does. Um, yeah, that was prolific. Um, I'm just, I'm blown away by that wisdom. I don't. <laughs> so yeah, it does make sense. It's just, it's so poetic the way you share it. Uh, we will share a little story with you. One time in a big forest with majestic trees that almost touched the clouds. There was this little sapling. And the little sapling started looking around at these gigantic, majestic, almost celestial trees, almost afraid. What is my place in this forest of giants? What am I going to be? What is happening? Am I worthy? And the 
giant trees signal to the little sapling, dear little sapling, you are not alone. We are all here, not only with you, but we are part of you. We exist in you as well as you exist in us. And if you allow yourself to grow naturally with the light of the sun and the rain and the warmth and our support, you too will grow into a giant tree, just like us. So be like the little sapling and grow into yourself. Does that make some sense? It does. It really does. That, that is just beautiful. And um, I, at this point, I just want to let Chris keep talking and sharing whatever, uh, you know, just <laughs> insights for anyone who is just, just more inspiration to kind of find our best version of ourselves, you know? How, so how whenever you come against a roadblock, you feel you might be drowning, or you are in a train that is going full steam heading towards a brick wall. Life appears very scary, as if you have no control. But if you just remember for a moment, that you actually do have more control than you have let yourself know, and that you can turn a situation around because you are not alone. You have what some people may refer to as an inner self or a subconscious self that is not the source of your problems, but instead is the source of your deeper wisdom, deeper knowledge to help you put the brakes on, get out of the water, and just let that small guidance reach a hand for you and pull you out. It may take a little practice, but the answers are there. You cannot have a situation without having prepared some, just like people prepare plan B. You have plan B, but you have become so immersed in your worries and your fears you have drowned out that inner wisdom. And this is something many people can relate to. And instead of acting out and trying to take down the world and the gods, know and realize that you have the means to pull yourself out. Not just pull yourself up by your bootstraps, but pull yourself out simply by accessing that inner pool of wisdom, of knowledge, of safety. This is a time where people feel very unsafe, uncertain. But there is within you a safe universe. Within you, not outside. And we say this because your state of mind creates your experience very directly. Once that little premise is understood and embraced, you can change your inner state of mind. And it will be reflected, you live in a reflected reality. We are not the first nor the only ones to make such a suggestion. Abraham Hicks, Seth, Bashar, so many others will also address that issue. You live in a universe that reflects your state of mind. So by embracing your own inner power base, if you like, your own safe universe, you begin to live in that state of mind. So basically put, you live in your mind. You don't live in physical reality, there is no physical reality. It appears that way to your senses. What you do is you live in your mind. So change the mind you live in, and lo and behold, your experience changes as well. 
Mm, wow. It is in a nutshell, but if you take it apart and study it, you will find that not only are we correct, but you are also correct in that you do have the means to transform your life. We cannot emphasize this enough. Our simple baseline message is that you're not powerless beings, like a leaf blown by the wind in the fall. You are powerful beings, but you can't experience that unless you acquiesce to that inner pool of wisdom. It will always elude you until one day you say, I have enough. Today is the day, not tomorrow, because tomorrow never comes. Today, I decide that I will change my mind into something I want to experience. Wow, Chris, you make it sound so easy. And um, I guess it is just that simple, huh? It actually is. The challenge is you make it complicated, especially because you always have this fear that the other shoe will drop. You live in a reality where the other shoe is just about to drop at any moment. Do not have too much joy because you will have too much sorrow and so on and so forth. These are all mental urban myths. And because you believe them, guess what? This becomes what you experience. Everything that is internal becomes the experience. So whether you're right or wrong, you're always right. It will always be what you believe. If you believe that you are an inferior being, that you are shameful, that something is wrong with you, that you are powerless, you're right. It will be. If you believe it's opposite, you're right. And it will be. Wow. Now, what is your, I know this is all, this almost is so redundant. What is the message and hope? What is your message and hope for all of us? That you each recognize how precious, how filled with grace, how beloved you are, how powerful you are, or not, depends on what you decide to go with. You hold the keys to your happiness or unhappiness. The key unlocks the same door, the world of your thoughts and your mind. But you must decide what is on the other side of the door. Mm. It is always filled with treasures and gems. Or not, you put it there. For those of us who struggle with this sort of thing, um, is there an easy way, like if we need these reminders from you, and we don't always have direct access to you. What is that easy way for us to, you know, all of this positive information and inspiration that you're giving us, how can we easily just tap into this on a regular basis? Indeed. For example, many, many people are convinced that the world is what it is. And of course, because it is exactly as you believe it to be. You cannot have any other kind of world than the one you believe it to be. And many people just simply cannot even imagine to question the nature of the reality. So here is one incredible key. Question. Ask why. 
Ask why do you think the things you think and do the things you do? Just ask yourself why. And the answer will come. It will come as inner dialogue. The main thing to remember is in spite of circumstances, you are always in control. When it appears you are not, question why have you let that happen? Not someone else, but you. And of course, this may take some practice, but you can practice it. You have practiced for decades in always worrying and fearing the worst possible outcome of any situation. What if you were able to slice through that and instead invite the best possible outcome of all situations? But that seems to escape so many people. So just that particular thing alone can have a tremendous impact in your state of mind. And at first, you might think, what is this? Why would I think that? But we encourage you to challenge your own status quo, your own mental states. And plug back into the reality of your being. Allow yourself to consider, even as a practice on a daily basis, allow yourself to consider that you are filled with grace, you are good, you are of good intent, you are extraordinary. And you can determine the outcome of your experiences. Just these few things, write them down, visit it every day if you like. And any time anything in you comes up to counterindicate that, well, of course not, you are not extraordinary, you are not anything special, you are not filled with grace, put the brakes on, say, hey, I thought we discussed and agreed we will actually go there as often as possible. I have listened to you for years and decades, and I think it's time for a change of rule. And the ruler now is myself with my new intent. You have not necessarily brought me anything spectacular. You have kept me in the same sandbox. I want a bigger sandbox. I want to build castles and beaches and all sorts of wonderful things. I understand that you were there in a time of need, but that is long gone. So therefore, I am reclaiming my power. I determine the course of my existence. I will not be like a leaf in the wind. I will be like a willow tree. I will bend with the wind and still stand up. Mm, oh my God. This is just uh, so beautiful. Chris, you're like a, a poet. You're... <laughs> It's just, wow. I mean, the wisdom, it's, um, we all need these reminders, you know, we all kind of lose our way. And it's so powerful to have you here with us sharing this um, wisdom and insight. I'm, I feel so blessed. And you may have noticed, as you suggested earlier on, that many of our talking points also seem to address you personally. So there is a reason for that particular feeling. Yeah, so help me understand that. So you have your own things mm -hmm. that you are dealing with. Mm -hmm. And we are also not only addressing you, but your audience. Mm -hmm. In that mm, mood, we are also particularly addressing you, but in a generalized way. Mm -hmm. So whenever you have that particular feeling, pay attention to it because we are addressing you. And there are many members of your audience who might also feel the same, that it is like we're talking to you. Yes, we are. 
Yeah, it's just, I think it resonates for everyone, but it feels very personal. It does. It feels like you are, uh, you know, it's, I'm asking these kind of broad based questions, but it's very much directed at me. I can sense that and feel that. It feels like it's a direct message to me that others will be able to use, but I'm feeling that um, energy for sure. So indeed, consider it this way. Grandma might stitch a beautiful tapestry. She might spend years creating and crafting this beautiful tap tapestry from her own fingers and her heart. And it may be intended for a daughter or granddaughter, but grandma also knows that anyone who sees it will also admire the art that is there. So it will speak in different ways to many people. It will speak very personally to daughter, even more personally to granddaughter, and it may speak generally to the rest of the family or even beyond. But it is all one piece of tapestry that serves many purposes. Mm, wow. Well, Chris, this has just been amazing. I am, I feel so blessed and uh, just called here today to receive this information and kind of spread it out there. And um, yeah, I'm so moved and touched deeply. Indeed, you are most welcome. And no, this one little thing, it is nothing that we have particularly done other than what you yourself need and do from within yourself. So we are simply echoing the knowledge that you entertain so that you may objectify it and pay more attention to it. Mm, oh, I love that. I love that. I just, um, I thank you for all of these affirmations so much. It really, I'm, I am touched and moved deeply and I know others are as well. It's just, uh, it's profound. It really is great wisdom. And uh, Indeed. Uh, if you want any kind of little affirmation, the simple one is very powerful. I am what I decide. I am not what anyone decides I am. Only I decide what I am. And if in your mind there are echoes of what other people have decided you are, cut it. You know, cut. Mm. That's all. And with that, we thank you for your lovely consideration. And always be extraordinary. And we return Joseph to you. Ah. How did that go? Wow, that was out of this world, Serge. I'm just so blown away. Um, and I feel so lucky for us to have connected and to have had the opportunity to, um, you know, have that amazing guidance and inspiration from Chris. So that was amazing. Uh, you know, your guests can be invited to visit our um, website, channelingchris.com. It's spelled, Chris is spelled with a K. Um, and we are also found on YouTube. There's dozens of videos there. Um, we're on Facebook as well, Channeling Chris. Um, and people can connect with us in that particular way. Um, if people are interested to have a more personal discussion with Chris, they can use those venues to communicate, especially the website, uh, if they wanted to have a consultation with Chris. And um, so I think the main thing is, uh, you know, to try and have fun with life, not to let it get us down. Wow. Well, Serge, this has been amazing. I thank you so much. And um, I'm just so honored and um, touched and moved deeply for your time and Chris today. So it just, it means so much. I know this 
uh, the messages are going to resonate so powerfully for so many people. Thank you. I think he had a good time. I have that feeling in there that he he enjoyed it. Ah. <laughs> uh, oh my god. Okay.